So today I'm diving into something I know a lot of you are curious about, and I was too, um, Phantom LUTs. Uh, Phantom LUTs are high quality color grading tools designed to help filmmakers and videographers achieve a cinematic look by applying LUTs or look up tables uh, to their footage. So I have taken a deep look at the Phantom LUT documentation. I'm going to walk you through it so you don't have to. I shoot on a Sony A67 ZV-E1 FX30. Um, so I'll be speaking kind of like from that perspective. So yeah, let's get into it. For best results, you'll want to shoot in S-Log3 with s Gamma 3 Cine. Now, why the setup? It's because you get the full dynamic range of up to 15 stops on cameras like, you know, A7S3, FX3, or FS6. Uh, this means more detail in both bright and dark areas, especially in tricky lighting conditions. It's a solid choice, capturing accurate colors as well. And I have also used these lots on my FX30, my ZV-E1, and A6700 with uh, fantastic results. Oh, and if you're using an A7S III, uh, the documentation recommends setting your sharpening down to negative seven. Uh, this keeps things smooth and natural, avoiding, you know, that over-sharpened digital look. Okay, so when it comes to white balance, here is a good starting point if you're shooting with a single camera. 5500 Kelvin for outdoor daylight, 5000 Kelvin for indoor daylight, and 4300 Kelvin for night shoots, indoors or outdoors. But, you know, at the same time, these aren't really like hard and fast rules. So feel free to experiment with uh, what looks best. If you're shooting with multiple cameras, things get a bit trickier. Uh, different cameras often interpret colors slightly differently. So, you know, it's best to use your custom white balance to keep everything consistent. If that's not possible, grab a color chart or like a gray card and shoot that with all your cameras to help match footage later on in post. I have shot interviews with an FX30 and my ZV-E1 using those recommended settings. So I use 5000 Kelvin for indoor. And uh, yeah, the color shift wasn't too different. So yeah, it's not terrible to rematch in post in my experience, but yeah, just so you know. All the Sony cameras needed to be overexposed to avoid noise, but with newer models like, you know, A7S3, FX3, FX6, it's not really that much of an issue. These sensors are much cleaner, so you can expose normally and still get great results. As for your exposure style, it all, you know, it's kind of like a personal preference. So some people like to overexpose a bit to get like cleaner shadows, while other people like to prioritize protecting highlights. So it's really, uh, it's really about what works for your specific scene and style. Uh, one thing to watch out for though is blindly trusting your camera's light meter. It's not always spot on, especially in more complex lighting situations. Trust your eyes and then, you know, how things look on screen itself. If you want an accurate preview of your final look, load the LUT onto an external monitor. This gives you like a real, real world sense of how your footage will turn out. And if you don't have an external monitor, use zebras and set them to 56 IRE um, to help with like skin tone exposure. When in doubt, think about how your eyes naturally see the scene. Your eyes are great at adjusting to light conditions, so use it as a guide for exposure. Also, depending on what you're shooting, you may want to adjust exposure differently. What does that mean? It means overexposed for brighter, more fun looks like comedies, fashion, or commercials, and exposed normally for documentaries or like lifestyle content. You might want to underexpose if you're going for a bit darker, more dramatic vibe, like a you know horror or a drama scene. So Phantom LUTs come in two flavors, Standard and Legacy. Standard LUTs are great for most situations, especially if you are matching your footage with like ARRI cameras. Uh, they're optimized for the latest Sony sensors and give you a very natural contrast. Legacy LUTs have a bit more contrast and they're awesome for low light shoots. Or if you're working with older Sony cameras, um, they encourage a slight overexposure for a more natural look in those situations. All right, so here's a tip if you're using an Atomos monitor. Sometimes when you send an S-Log3 signal to an Atomos monitor, it can look overly contrasty, and that's where Atomos monitoring lots come in. They kind of correct that contrast and give you a more natural image. You'll want to use the Atomos monitoring lots when you're sending S-Log3 directly to the monitor. But if you're already using a lot in camera, stick with the regular lot on the camera itself. If you're looking to squeeze more detail out of your highlights and your shadows, WDR wide dynamic range pre LUTs uh, can help. They go on before the main LUT and expand the dynamic range of your footage. But keep in mind, 
using these might slightly reduce the smoothness of your highlight roll off. So it's, you know, obviously like a trade off depending on the project that you're working on and the look that you're going for. All right, let's talk about applying LUTs, right? So when you're applying a LUT, it is recommended to start at 100% strength. This gives you the LUTs full intended look, gamma curve, uh, contrast, color, exactly as designed. Once you see the baseline, you can tweak it from there, but starting at full intensity ensures everything is balanced and natural. I work in DaVinci Resolve, and what I usually do for my color grades is have a blank node. I'll add a serial node to that. I'll apply the phantom node directly to the second node. And if I have to make any adjustments, I'll make them to the previous node. So I'm never really touching the settings on the phantom lot node, it's only on the previous node. So for these lots, you'll see versions marked 33x and versions marked 65x. Here's what that means. 65x lots are, you know, the higher quality option and are best used in grading in post-production. 33x lots are smaller and easier for your camera to handle, making them ideal for in-camera monitoring. Uh, for grading, always go with 65x. It is the highest level of precision and it will give you the best image when you export it from your desktop editor. Do not, do not, do not bake LUTs into your footage. Try to avoid baking 33x LUTs directly into your footage. Uh, this can cause issues like banding, especially if your camera uses lower quality interpolation. It's far better to shoot in log and then apply a 65x LUT in post-production for the cleanest results. And then one last thing, post-production settings. To get the most out of your phantom LUTs in your editing software, make sure you have the right settings dialed in. DaVinci Resolve users, set your color sense to DaVinci YRGB. Timeline color space to Rec 709A. Output color space to the same thing, Rec 709A. These are Mac specific. And enable tetrahedral interpolation for smoother color transitions. If you are using Premiere Pro, set your LUT interpolation to tetrahedral Final Cut Pro users, great news, you guys are all set. Final Cut Pro uses tetrahedral interpolation by default, so you're going to get, you know, like, good results right out of the box. And that's it, guys. You are ready to take your footage to the next level. If you found this video helpful, please drop a comment, a like, subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.